Hey, what's up, garden and friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Toby, you want to say hi? No? Okay. You good boy. Picking up from right where the last vlog left off. I need to come in here, cut these alocages out. First, I need to clear this area, though, and, uh, you know, all that fun stuff. This is just going to be a very casual midweek vlog, which I don't typically do, but just didn't really fit in with last week's vlog time-wise, and then it's probably not gonna fit into this weekend's vlog time-wise. So uh, it's just a good chance to get a better look at some of the plants. I've had a lot of people ask me in the past for tours of just like the house plants, which is really hard to do when you have them tucked in with all of your other things. So this would be a good time for me to pull things out, get a closer look at some things and you know, just sort of hang out. It's gonna be casual, not going overboard with anything here. Gotta take it easy, because there is a lot, and I mean a lot to do these next couple of days. This is just gonna be kind of looking at some of the plants, nothing too dramatic. For starters, oh my goodness, look at how big these impatients have gotten. These are just gigantic. They're really big, like knee height, almost to my waist, not quite. Um, excuse you, what are you doing? Just get out of there. With a lot of plants, I come and just cut them back. The impatience, though, they just snap up, so seems unnecessary to go through all that. A little bit faster just to come in, snap them, get them out of there. These Hamelia patents, I could, I'm not going to do this, but if there's something that you plant as an annual, these are definitely something that you can give a little trim to. Bring them inside, put them someplace cool that's not too terribly bright, and they'll overwinter beautifully just give them a little drink like every couple of weeks nothing too much basically they'll go into kind of a dormancy and it's really simple i'm not going to do that because like space is limited and precious so it, they they gotta go <sighs> and uh, i actually prefer the small leaf form the door form of the hamelia patents these firecracker plants which i do have some of those and i'll take those in these guys though i'm just gonna cut them out of here i don't really think I'm going to have room to go overboard bringing something like this inside. I wish I did, but eh, just doesn't seem to be likely. There's a lot of other stuff that needs to go in the house. Another fun thing about getting in with the plants and checking things out is sometimes there's some little surprises. Like, what's this? What's going on here? Why is there a Sinogium growing in here? I didn't plant this here. I wouldn't plant that here. This got so much sun up until things filled out. Why is there this cute little arrowhead vine in here? Very bizarre. My guess would be that probably at some point, like just a scrap of one of them got thrown into the mix. Mix of plants over here. Huh, okay, well that's fun. That's a plant I'll hold on to because they're fairly easy to overwinter and bring inside. But uh, yeah, the rest of the stuff's gotta go. Gotta get the annuals out. Hey, that rooted in real well, didn't it? No, not real. Yeah, that can be one of the issues with using micro irrigation. The, not the irrigation, the micro emitters. They're like sprayers. Sometimes you don't get as deep of a watering with those. So, you have to let them run a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, so for an area like this, I'll be more specific with my drip heads next year and actually put heads around the plants, actual drip emitters instead of using the sprayer. I think there was just probably too much foliage in here and so there were things probably blocking some of the plants. That would be my guess. Hey, there we go. Wow, these are looking great. I couldn't see them as well when all the annuals were over here in this area, but they did fantastic. I mean, I could tell they did well because they were sticking up above everything, but I really, was more interested in what was going on down there as far as trunking goes. And they really, they did their thing. They've got nice trunks on them, lots of suckers coming up. I will say though, there is a problem. It's kind of hard to see, but there are some mealybugs on there. And y'all know, that's something I've been battling for years. And I've been on the fence with these as to whether or not I wanted to go ahead and pot them up and keep them growing during the winter time. Cause I had one that I left growing actively last year in a pot. The other one I left go dormant. And um, I left go dormant, I let it go dormant. I, I can't tell a difference between the two. I don't know which one was the one that was dormant, which one wasn't. They uh, bounced back so quickly. So, or the one that was dormant, like caught up so fast that 
because of the mealy bugs, there's no, I mean, I only see a few, but I don't want to see any. I'm going to store these dormant. And all that really means is I'm going to cut the foliage off, dig them up, knock the dirt out of the root balls, and they'll just hang out in a cool, dry, dark corner for the winter time, which is really more convenient anyways. The only drawback to that is you don't get the instant gratification when you bring them back outside, but that's all right. They grow quickly. I mean, this is all, all of this is new growth this year for the most part. I did a little bit of pruning, so yeah, why not just cut them back and let them chill? That's just what makes the most sense to me as far as what to do with these guys. It just seems like keep it simple. It's one less thing to have to worry about in the winter time while I have everything inside. So, and cut those back. Yeah, there we go. They were kind of rooted in sort of heavily, which is a good thing. That just means the plants are healthy. Getting this cheap tarp to use for all my clippings was like one of the best things I did this season. It's been so nifty when it comes to yard waste. I can just drag it around with me, put all my scraps and clippings like in a couple of days, not in this video. Probably the next one, I'll be having to cut all this out and all that stuff and you know, just toss it on a tarp and drag it to the yard waste. It saves so much time, keeps things, no, it doesn't look tidy, but it's better than everything being on the patio. I mean, there's a little bit of spillage. And yes, so with these, like I said, I probably will put them in a, a large empty pot because they're gonna need something to kind of help hold them up. I'll figure that out when it's time to move them in. Right now, I'm just kind of pulling the plants and getting them ready. Start moving things around. Here's a croton which I have a lot of, I have so many crotons, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I know for sure the bigger crotons will be coming in. These were in the shade. That's why they're not as colorful. And this one is a variety I really like. It's the mother and daughters. They have this cute little extra leaflet they put out on the end of their stems. It doesn't really appreciate being moved inside. Most of them don't. They tend to throw quite a fit and defoliate. So I'm prepared for that to happen. Since these ones were in the shade though, I think that that it should be okay. Hopefully they will respond better to being moved in. I don't know though. We'll see. It's never killed them. They just like go, eh, drop their leaves for a few weeks and then they put out new ones. But I prefer they don't do that because all that does, I have to clean all that up. And I don't feel like having to do all that cleaning. Dracania. I think this one's called like lemon lime, lime sizzler, something like that. I can't remember. It's really, really pretty though. It's definitely one of my favorites. Oh, did I plot that? I thought I left this in its pot. Okay, well, I'm going to have to pot that up into something else. That's not great. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay. All right, that worked out okay. Typically, with these arrangements that are meant to be very, very temporary, I just leave them in their nursery can and drop that into the pot. It makes things so much easier because you can just reach in and pull them out, knock a little bit of that soil off of there, and they're good to go. I mean, you can clean up better than that. That's not going to do. This is the false Aurelia. It grew a ton this year. And it's in a very small pot. That could be an issue this winter. I don't know. Just as far as being able to keep the poor thing hydrated in that little pot, I'll have to play around. If I need to repot it, I'll repot it. Just not the ideal time to be doing so, but I can. Really did grow a ton though. Great plant. Really nice, resilient plant. You being my helper, Toby? No, you're looking for squirrels. I know what you're doing. You're not going to trick me. This croton is the one that, if you've been following for a while, this past spring, I had a big Alexander pond that got blown over and it smashed one of my crotons. This is the one that smashed. It's recuperated well for the most part, but it's still, oh goodness, get off. Excuse me. I have hydrangea petals all over me now. It's still a little bit wonky. But uh, I'll put it in the lineup and see how that goes. Make up my mind when I have them all gathered. Chances are every single croton is going to come in. But if it looks like I'm going to have to be picky, then the one that's all messed up would probably be the one to go. I don't know, though. Luckily, I don't have to make that decision right now. Right now, just gathering plants, lining them up for a closer look. Getting a nice look at the foliage. And you can see I need to do some cleaning in there. Lots of leaves. And this one, I have to make sure I keep out in the open. If I tuck it in there, I'll forget that this needs to be refilled with soil. I just dropped it in a nursery can. It hasn't been potted up yet. Isn't it a beautiful plant, though? So that's why I kind of want to do this part separately, just for people who like to get a different look at the house plants. Kind of go through them and see them together on their own somewhat. I mean, the backdrop's just a mess, right? But y'all know what's going on out here. Kind of hard to keep things tidy when you're tearing everything apart. Isn't that just the coolest Tricania though? 
absolutely love it. The foliage is nice and glossy, and it's grown quickly, too. I mean, it's really gotten up there. It's at least, I almost said doubled in size. Not quite that much, but it's doing well. Okay, Norfolk Island Pine. Did okay, not much to it. It's just like, I got it last year mostly for the video, so I could do a video on them, and I really like it. It's just like, it didn't, I don't know. It doesn't spark joy anymore, but I'm not going to get rid of it. It does need a repotting, and it needs really needs some cleaning up. All that is basically where it was tucked in. wasn't getting much light, so oops, my bad. And the Philodendron bipinadephidum. Actually, this has been renamed. Yes, it's not a Philodendron anymore, right? Still bipinadephidum. Go ahead and get a bunch of that stuff out of there. Keeping things clean when you bring them in really does help cut back on pests. Like a leaf like this, I'll try and rinse it, but it's just so chilly. I would probably actually prefer to just go ahead and remove a leaf like that. What are you doing? You hanging out with your flamingo friend? This is new. He doesn't usually get up there. You cute, Toby. You being cute. Definitely got some growth out of this guy this year, but it's all kind of wonky. I think next year I'd like to put this in a spot that gets a lot more sun, partially because this area over here where that little serenity garden area, that is an area where it gets a decent amount of sun throughout the summertime, but it's mostly morning sun. And then uh, like around September, it's just dark. And so I should have shuffled things around, but I didn't down here doing some other repotting things. Not an ideal time. This majesty palm is just, uh, it's there. I don't, y'all know how I feel about majesty palms. This Chef Lara here that I just dropped right when I hit record, I got this, you can see, two bucks on clearance years ago with the intention of doing one of those neat bonsais with these guys where you prune all the foliage off and you train them to put out aerial roots. It's been like three years and I still haven't gotten around to it, but it's just such an easy plant. I'm like, well, I keep it around in the wintertime. I've just kind of been throwing it under my plant shelves. It gets a little bit of morning light, splash of water every now and then, but... I just don't really worry about it, and it does fine. It's been doing really well like that. Okay, Alpinia's the rim, but look at how messy this one has gotten. What a mess. This was tucked away way back into the corner where I couldn't really do anything with it, so I'm going to come in, make sure all that's trimmed out when I bring it in. I think I'm just probably going to cut this in half this winter and maybe start with the alocages and see how it does, because I just... They... If, they, if I keep them... And that's just because if I keep these Zerembits growing actively during the wintertime, they tend to get, when they stretch out, because the, the artificial lighting just isn't intense enough for them, the lighting I have anyways, and they get kind of limp and scraggly looking. The mealybugs very much enjoy them, and um, they get in my way. They get too big. So, yeah, I'm probably going to try this one dormant. See how that goes. You don't know till you try This is... Just the cutest new little thing. I've never seen him do this before. It's usually a Tucker thing. What you doing, Tobes? Just busy being cute? You busy being a cutie, Toby? Hi, Toby. What's, wait. You're avoiding eye contact. What'd you do? No, I'm sure you're fine. You're a good boy. Yeah, you're such a good boy. Good boy, Toby. <sighs> Another plant I got with the intention of doing a video on it and never did, so that's something I'll work on this winter. Another plant that's been very simple and easy to grow. I don't really have much to say about it. It's just kind of sort of like the Chef Lair. It just does its thing. I water it, gets fertilized, I check on it, but haven't had any troubles with it. I mean, that's actually been the case for most of the plants out here. The Norfolk Island pine, a little bit of damage there from, I think, just being squished into a spot without enough air circulation around it. But got that, what is this? Flaming, to no, Tahitian flame hedichium. It's a butterfly ginger. I love this butterfly ginger. Not a house plant, but not really hardy here. Although none of my gingers are hardy here and they do okay in the ground. But this is one that I had a much harder time obtaining. They might be more common now, but a few years ago they were pretty hard to get a hold of. I just keep it potted up during the winter months and kind of sort of like I'll be doing with the alocages. Just let them chill. They'll get a splash of water every now and then, uh, but not much. They're just going to sort of hang out and I ideally want to get them into a dormancy, right? That would be the point. Just look at, look at that foliage. Isn't that pretty? There are plenty of other Hedichiums that are variegated. This one I've just noticed grows a little bit more vigorously. Not a ton. Like it's not a crazy super fast grower, but it's 
then just more sturdy than some of the other variegated types that I've tried. This, pothos. I mean, it's done what pothos do. This goes all the way back into that berm and then comes around here and done a lot of growing. Now this is a plant where I really, like, I did not do anything with it this year. I want to repot it though because it's in this beautiful calavera pot and you can't even see it because the pothos hangs over. So that might be a winter project to get that done. Go ahead and pull this out. Yeah, look at that. Lots and lots and lots of growth. But like I said, that's not really surprising. That's what they do. They go nuts. As long as they can seek out moisture, they just keep moving. The foliage up high got bigger, but I just think that this pole's nowhere near big enough to get this to a point where it's climbing and it would get the fenestrations. This is uh, one of those hydrangeas that didn't do well like from the get when I got it, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it back, see how it does in the spring. I didn't take it back because they'll just throw it away. So I was like, well, we'll give it a shot and see how it does next year. But anyways, I do think that that could use a repotting for sure. Not like I said, that's not something that's happening right now. I'm just, you know, this is just sort of the like, let's talk about the plant time. <laughs> <laughs> that was an intense voice crack. Second puberty is very real. So yeah, that's that. I'll try and figure something out with it. I do want to pull it from that pot though. Look at what a gorgeous pot this is. I could do something so much nicer with this than have something in it that's going to hang over. And I don't think that I can put a pole in this that's big enough, like I said, to uh, accommodate all that. It just doesn't seem reasonable. I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, Dracania, marginata, tricolor, beautiful plant. This was one of those like pre-assembled drop-in containers from the big box stores. And it had these three Dracanias in it. And I was like, that's a really good price. It was like, I want to say $15. And this Dracania has definitely doubled in size, if not more. It's gotten some wonky growth on it because it fell over a few times. And like, that's all it took. But I think that'll straighten back out, no problem. These are a really, really, really easy to grow plant. This was an extremely resilient plant. Like I said, though, they really, for the most part, all of them have been. I don't really have anything out here that's too challenging to grow. But I just, I get impressed with things that do a lot of growing. I like that. Do something. Show me what you're worth. Just, you know, it's nice to get to see all the growth and everything. And of course, one of my favorite crotons. Nothing special about it, just regular croton, but really big. Look at how big. It did definitely do some growing this year, too. I was going to say it didn't grow very much, but for the most part, everything from right around here and up, most of that's new growth because this is where there was some foliage burn. I got this, like, basically straight off the truck at the nursery, and I've talked about it before how with things like crotons and just a lot of tropicals in general, it's nice to get them when they're already sitting out in the full sun because I know that the plant's acclimated and it's good with it. This one apparently wasn't the case, so it got kind of scorched, but it recovered just fine. Look, I mean, you can see it's good, nice and healthy, plenty of growth on it. This one has been in the sun. I should have. I really, really, really should have pulled this one and moved it to the shade about a month ago. I just didn't have time for it. I mean, when I look back on it, it would have only taken a couple minutes, so I should have done it, but now what's probably going to happen is I'll move it in <laughs> where it's going to be under artificial lighting and it's going to throw a fit, like I talked about the other crotons, drop a lot of its foliage, if not all of them. It's what they seem to do for me unless I acclimate them to lower light conditions. So, I don't know, just get into, oops. But again, not a big deal. The, it'll flush back out, so I'm not really too concerned about that. And there have been times that I have acclimated them and they still drop their leaves. Like sometimes they're just one of those plants that when you move them around, they throw a fit, which is the case with a lot of alocajas. The ficus lorata is one that I've really noticed. I move that one, that fiddly fig, throws a fit. Not as much outside. That seems to be more of an indoor thing. When I've moved it around out here in the backyard, it doesn't complain as much about it. By complain, I mean drop foliage and get kind of wilty. All right, we talked about all this, and last weekend's vlog handled as much of that as I could, and as I will for this video. Don't worry about that right now. And then remember these? It's from the Caladium video. These are those frog in a blender bulbs. Need to go ahead and throw those into a paper bag. Drop them in here with the others. That way I can just keep them separate so I know what's what. I'll probably pop some holes in here. Okay, that's not it. There's always plenty more to do, but that's just a little glimpse of the house plants and sampling of what needs to be done over the next few days. Whew. 
hunts. Tom hunts for guys. Gently put some holes in there. Somehow, the bottom of that box got a little bit damp. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a bit. And then get to finishing up the garage and moving the plants inside. And that, hi, how you doing, sweetie? Can you say hi? Yeah, you're so sweet. The camera kiss, you're so nice. Whew. Oh, I love that croton so much. It's gotten so big. And these gingers, remember in the spring when I said I was going to put maybe a palm over here where that spruce was? I still need to get that stump out. The gingers, they finally came up, did their thing, and they were so big. I was like, well, that's that's a terrible idea. You wouldn't even be able to see the palm this year. And uh, um, the, uh, the, the other point. Wow, look at all those weeds. I couldn't get back there. See, things were kind of, I mean, I could have. I just didn't feel like trying. Oh, the other point. The, trying to overwinter a palm outside of its growing zone in a colder zone, I prefer to get them to the ground as soon as the temperatures in the springtime hit like 50 at the minimum, and that means ground temperatures too. And by the time I was back in town, because I did, you know, a little bit of stuff out of town over the summer, it was kind of late in the year. I mean, it was like mid-late June, and I would have preferred to, if I were going to do a palm in the ground, to get that in the ground, like, I don't know, even mid to late April. It depends on the season, the weather, and everything, because that's all variable, and that's all variable. There are variables, and it changes. Oh, time to stop talking. <laughs> Anyways, the next vlog, I was going to, the, there's noise going on next door. I don't know what it is, but it won't stop. I'm sorry. We'll just go back in the house. That works, too. It was all that noise. Isn't that obnoxious, pumpkin? As I was saying, in the last vlog, I said I would do a midweek vlog with doing things with the plants and then setting up the grow space. I realized <laughs> she didn't, she's not in the mood to vlog. That's fine. I realized, though, that that's, like, going to be hard to do because the grow space setup is something I do over, a, like, period of weeks. I move the plants in and rearrange things, get them even more cleaned up. I clean them up before I bring them in, but I go even further with that. And then uh, I get plastic put up, and it's a process. It's not something I can really do in, like, one day for a video. So I'm going to film that as I go. The next vlog, I will be moving the plants in. I have to. It's going to be 24 degrees in a couple of days, so they got everything's got to come in. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the update there. Okay, well, not everything. Like, the queen palms, they'll be okay. I'll lay them on their side. Same thing with the windmill palms. Oh, sorry. had a bubble in my throat. Uh, those are plants. With, they'll be okay with that. I mean, 24 degrees is very cold, but the ground is still warm because this is like an abrupt weather change. So I'll lay them on the ground. Having the pool is the only reason I'm confident with doing that because otherwise I, I wouldn't do that, I don't think. But I know that there's a nice warm body of water there. I'll lay them down, throw a tarp or burlap or something over them. They'll be okay for one night. It should be fine. But you know what I'm saying? The tropical tropicals, like the... What is that? Foxtail palm, the Adenidias, the Monsteras, the Heliconians. I'm just going to cut them back a little bit. Well, that'll all, you know, that'll, I'll make sure that those sorts of details are in this upcoming vlog over the weekend. And then um, after that, once everything's with the growth space, I'll have a separate video out for that. Does that sound okay? I hope so. That's what I got to do. What was the point of this vlog? Didn't really have one. Just an update with some of the plants. Closer look at some things. And uh, I didn't, with everything going on, there's no time for a midweek video. So this just made the most sense to me, right? I, I like it. I think this was okay. Hopefully you thought so too. Give the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. So thank you. And subscribe as well. And hit that notification bell. Upload multiple times a week. And that way you'll know when new videos come out. Have all my social media linked down below in the description. I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. Say goodbye to the pretty ginger flowers. I don't think they'll make it to the next vlog. Well, they'll be in the next vlog, I'm sure. I'll go through with, like last looks before that cold, hard frost comes through. But I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna miss them. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll just kind of pull some plants up and have a good look at them. Taking things easy. Nice casual hangout. Hope you're having a great day, great life, and everything's going beautifully for you. <laughs> Too close, pumpkin. I'm sorry. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. <laughs>